Hello. So I'm going to show you how you can um, make a sort of a headboard. Um, now I'm going to show you how I would do it personally. Um, but before I get into that, you know, the reason that your headboard isn't working is because, you know, you've got too many um, edges in there. And when you want a nice curved, curved surface like that, it, the fewer edges, the better. Um, but let's just say, for example, that you want to make a headboard like this, okay? That goes like that, from that goes like this, from the post, then down, then up, like that. Let's say you want to make a headboard like that. That's how I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna show you how to do. And I'll quickly show you how you might want to make a cylindrical-looking headboard. So. It's going to take a bit of explaining, especially if you're not really familiar with topology. But I'll try and um, I'll try and explain it as best as I can to help you get get a better understanding. Okay, so what I want you to do is press Shift and A to make a uh, mesh plane like this, and then tab for edit mode. And we're just going to mirror these things over on the X and the Y anyway. So. Okay, so select these ones, and then we want this to be on the zero axis. So zero, and then this is gonna be the other side. So G and then Z, sorry, derp, G, and then X, because we want to move it back. So G, nope, I've hidden it, damn it. G, X, okay, move it back to about there, maybe about there. Now, what we want to do is Let's say that we want our headboard to be about maybe G, Y, maybe about this wide. So this is where the um, bed post is going to be, and this is where the center of the headboard is going to be. So we need to move this back on the Y. So select these vertices, and then zero, because we're going to mirror this side over to this side. If you don't have this menu, then press N for November to bring it up. Make sure that you're in global, not local. Okay, press A. G, Z to move it up and just put it roughly how high you want it to be. So G, Z, I'm going to say about that high. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to add maybe about, let's say, I don't know, maybe five cuts in here and then we're going to move them around to get the rough shape that we want. So press Control R, then scroll your mouse, one, two, three, and you can just come down here. Left click, then right click. And I'm going to put about maybe five in here, like that. Okay, so now what you want to do is go into your front view or your right view. It's a right view for me. So basically, so you're looking at it from the side, so from this direction. So three. And we're just going to come in here. Make sure that you're in X-ray mode as well. So Z and Y-frame. And so we know that this is going to... Um, come down here so let's do G and then move this down to about there G there um, and we're just going to try and make a nice sort of curve G Z G just kind of getting the profile that you want and if it helps you what I suggest that you do is add your subsurface modifier now if it helps you um, so come out of edit mode and then click on this and then go to um, subsurface modify like that and then bring it up to two like that. Then go back into edit mode and you can see pretty much what you want. So just going in, roughly getting the shape that I'd like to have. So something like maybe there, maybe bring this down to a bit more of a sharper thing until you get something you know like that. I'm gonna come out of extra mode by pressing Z and then six okay come out of edit mode and this is pretty much what you will have if that's that's the sort of design that i'm going to go for okay right click and then shade smooth okie dokie so now what you notice is this isn't very sharp it's it's kind of rounded off and we don't really want that so what we can do is go into edit mode again by pressing the um, tab key go into edge selection by pressing two and then we want to move it out a little bit like that. So come into press E and then Y and move it a little bit like that. Okay, just a little bit. 
Um, if you want, you can just press E, Y, and then use your arrow keys to, to move it out a little bit like that. That'll just make it a bit sharper. Okay, now this one I don't really want to make sharp yet. I'll deal with that when we mirror it. Okay, so in fact, yeah, let's just do that. Okay, so now what you want to do is click on this edge here, hold on Alt, then click the one next to it, and that will select this entire loop. Okay, now press E, then Z to bring it down, S for scale, Z for the Z axis, and then zero to level them out, and then G. Z zero. Sorry, sorry. Just yeah. Come up here and then type zero in here to move it down to the bottom like that. Now this comes the this comes the um, not really the difficult part, but this takes a bit of explaining to um, takes a bit of explaining. But um, I'm, I hope I can explain it to you um, so you can understand it. We basically want to make these edges sharp, and to do that we have to add what's called a supporting loop. And for this top part, it's going to be easy. You know, we can just go in here and we can make sure we're, make sure we're in edit mode. We can just press Control R and then hover over this one, left click and then move it across like that, right to the edge. Okay, so right to the very edge. Don't have to worry about this side because we're going to mirror it. Now, if you notice, if we come out of edit mode, sorry, with edit mode, you'll notice that it's kind of um, Z6. It's kind of it's not very smooth here. We want that to be nice and smooth because it's kind of it's kind of looks a bit weird, but it, look, it looks fine here, but not here. So what we need to do is we need to actually add another support loop right here. So this is going to take a bit of um, moving vertices around, but I'm hoping that you can kind of understand it um, if I can explain it well well enough to you. So you go back into edit mode, and then. Um, what I think you should best doing is turning this off for the moment. You just turn this off for the moment because it might just be a bit distracting for you. So turn this off and then press Control and R. Click and then drag this up to about there, roughly. And that's kind of what we want. Now, if you go into the front view, actually, it's done a pretty good job. It's actually done a pretty good job. Um, but, you know, sometimes um, you might have to you know, there might be a bit of a, like this might be this much of a gap and this one might be even more of a gap. And you just have to go in and, you know, pretty much move the vertices to be as close to this edge as possible, making sure that this entire gap here is pretty much evenly spaced. But this time it's done a pretty good job of it. Um, so um, let's go back into our, turn this back on again. And as you can see, that is what you're left with. Now, for example, this down here isn't very clean. It's very sort of, um, you know, rounded. So go, go back into edit mode and press Control and R. Click once, then right click and then press S for scale, Z for scaling on the zero axis and then zero. Then right click. So oops, S scale zero, left click and then just bring these down G Z bring them all the way down like that okay roughly to the bottom like that we're not going to do it for the center piece because when we mirror it over we'll, then we'll do that after okay so now let's say for example you wanted to modify this you wanted to modify the shape you could easily do that just go back back into x-ray mode and you can just come in here and you can just move these around however you want to do it but just make sure that um, when you do that, make sure that you pretty much, um, if this helps you, then I don't really use this, but if this helps you, then use this as well, you know, then just, you just sort of keep things nice and even. And then what you can do is just click over these like that, scale on the Y, scale Y zero, that same here, scale Y zero, just to make sure that you've got a nice topology. Now I'll show you what I'm talking about here. If I if I added another edge in here, look what happens if I add another edge. You see how sharp that becomes. You see how uncomfortable that looks. That's why having fewer edges is always better. So let's see. Let's just move this across a little bit like that. 
Um, maybe I want this one here. Maybe I want this part here to be to be a bit sharper. Maybe I want this part to come up like that. I can do that and then actually come in and add another cut here. So Control R, cut, move it across. Because maybe I want that sort of look. You know, come out of edit mode. You know, it, it all depends on what you want. But the principle is don't use too many. Um, when you're initially starting out, don't use too many edges use as few as possible and because otherwise it's just gonna become really rigid and yeah so now what you want to do is um if you want to do this non-destructively i guess um let's go into um yeah, make sure we're out of wireframe mode um come up to oh, what was it gone Modifiers, add modifier, mirror. That's okay, we can fix that in a minute. Mirror on the X and the Y. Let's see why it's doing that. Okay, it's doing that because we didn't actually add a cut down here. So come back into edit mode and add another cut down by pressing Control R down here. Move that to there. The faster way of doing this would be to add a cut in the middle like this and then selecting this cut, this um, loop, and then pressing Control B, and then that would be the faster way of doing it, of adding two separate cuts at the same time. So yeah, now what we can do is come out of this, and then we can make sure that in our top view, everything is on the zero axis. Um, seems to be, apart from this little part there, let's see what's going on there, shall we? Okay, so we need to we need to bring this a lot closer to this. So pr click on press two, hold down Alt to click this one, and then just press G. And we're actually on the X up here, as you can see. So press G, X, and then just use your arrow keys to move it as close as possible, like that. Press Enter. Okay, come out of edit mode, and then we're going to mirror this over. Um, add and modifier mirror there we go then what we're going to do is we're going to just delete those um these inner lines because we're, we're not going to need them x what i'll do is i'll mirror it on this axis first apply that like that and then let's look at, let's look at our wireframe it's pretty we're, we're just going to delete these ones because we you know we don't need them so come into edit mode um zoom in Go press number two for edge. Click on where's it gone? Let's just turn this off. Click on that. Select this edge. Hold down or select the other one. So there. X dissolve edges. Same here. Click it. Zoom in again using the control and middle mouse button if you need that smoother transition and zooming. Hold on, Alt, X, dissolve edges, and we'll keep that one there um, for nice, clean distribution. Um, depends what you want to do. If you want to put this in ZBrush or something, then um, yeah. So now we can just go ahead and add another mirror modifier. Mirror on the Y axis, apply the mirror, apply the mirror. And then enable subdivision again. And there we have a pretty rootin' tootin' looking headboard. Come out of that mode. I hope that kind of gave you a better idea. Another way of doing it would be to, you know, um, you know, sort of adding, yeah, just adding, um, like a, a curve or something but I, I don't really like to use curves that much but yeah I know this was a bit long-winded but I wanted to explain to you how you would um, go about doing this sort of thing so um, another very very quick example um, a very quick example of would would be a cylinder you know say for example if I quickly made a cylinder mesh cylinder now 
when you want to make um, subdivisioned, that's not even a word, circles, you know, um, circular shapes, it's always best to use like an eight sided thing because that that'll, you'll get much nicer results with that. But I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I go in R, Y, zero, sorry, R, Y, 90 degrees. Okay. And now let's say that I just come in here and, um, okay. Press control R, click on the middle, right click, then press control B to bevel this outwards, roughly to the edges like that. Okay. And then click this face, this face, and then just um, inset it by pressing I, inset a little bit to add another support loop, wherever it's going, uh, like that. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to press one on the keyboard, choose this vertice, hold on shift, choose that one, and then press J, click this one, click this one, J, do the same for this side. This one, this one, J, this one, this one, J. Okay. And again, we're just going to go into the front view, go into wireframe mode, press number three, delete these bottom faces, X face, um, like that. Okay. Press A on the keyboard, S for scale on the X axis, scale it in. Now, this is me just demonstrating what would happen. This is, I'm showing you why this hap why this happens, why you were having problems. Okay. Now this would be really good for a subdivision. You know, it's really good. Like, you know, this, like, this is what people typically use with, you know, stuff like this. Um, you know, then you can just, you know, go ahead and go into edit mode. Um, one, select these vertices, G, Z, bring them down. Sorry. X-ray mode. G, Z, bring them down. Whatever, you know, just whatever you, whatever you're going for. Um, but now let's say I added another edge in here. Watch what happens. I did one there. Then I added um, another one here. Let's say I added one um, here. You see what happens when you start adding more edges, it's going to become um, more sort of rigid looking. Because you know the, the the closer edges are together, the the sharper, the more harsher they become. The further apart they are, the more smooth they become. That's how subdivision surface modeling works. Um, so another example, like say if I if I move this, if I if I press G and just move this across, you can see that if I move this closer, it becomes sort of a bit. It becomes more you know. If I move this roughly in the middle then these vertices aren't being affected as much. But if I move it closer, you can see that it really starts to become really bad looking. Um, I hope that kind of explains it to you. The further apart edges are, the more smoother things um, will be. The closer together they are, the sharper and the, um, you know, for this sort of thing that you're trying to do, um, yeah, just, just use as few edge loops as possible. So anyway, I hope that helped you. If you've got any questions, then please feel free to, free to ask. I'm sorry that it was a long video, but, you know, I like to explain things in detail. Um, so, yeah, I hope that you, you know, do well on your project and um, good luck.